Hello and welcome everybody. Um, I am Oliver Lietz from Nano Cosmos, based in Berlin in Germany. I'm really happy to be back in the shows after three years again. So it's uh, exciting to be here and uh, meet a lot of old friends and uh, interesting discussions again here at the show. So I'm going to talk about uh, the business and technical challenges of uh, interactive live streaming and how this is driving audience engagement. Um, I want to talk about a bit of about uh, use cases. So I uh, consider two main scenario types of use cases which we can describe as type one as kind of live events like we are now here on the show I'm standing on the stage I'm talking to you as an audience I might pick up questions from you directly and these types of live events are as everybody knows also streamed to the world and uh, the key thing is about interactive live streaming is that the audience can directly be engaged and can interact with the presenter somehow, can ask questions, can give any kind of feedback. Um, and for example, in uh, things like that or in annual general meetings in the enterprise space, you can add any kind of voting during the presentations. So keep the audience uh, interactive uh, and engaged during this session. Scenario type two is a bit different. It's about monetized content. Uh, it's more like ad hoc streaming, instant streaming for 24-7 operations. That means use cases like live auctions, live sports betting, live games or live retail, where you directly monetize your video content for the audience. And there it's very important that you keep the real-time interaction active and enable the business case around the video stream. So let's uh, share an example for this uh, kind of uh, stage presentation, town hall meetings, panel discussions with questions and answers. Um, you have a panel sitting on the uh, podium and um, have a discussion which is shared with the global audience. The audience is connected to the stream by opening up the player on any device, um, preferable for instant access on a browser. So you just open up the browser, watch the stream, have some interactive elements with the live stream, like Q&A polls, etc. And this interaction is then fed back to the panelists and to the um, um, uh, presentation, so you can directly interact with the audience. So this in real-time interaction between the presenters and the audience is only possible with real-time streaming or ultra-low latency live streaming to reach a global audience on any device in a very short delay. We also call that a lean-forward experience. So everybody in the audience is somehow interacting and can type any kind of questions, can do feedback, compared to the lean-back experience, which you have usually in OTT TV applications where you're sitting in a couch and enjoying an event uh, on a big screen. That's another example which expands the virtual meetings or the, the stage meetings to the hybrid space. So the presenter is not only on stage, it's also expanded to panelists coming in virtually by any kind of type of video conferencing application. So this, uh, these hybrid uh, events are more and more, of course, interesting to combine the personal meetings with the virtual meetings online and then expand this meeting to larger audiences. This can be seen as a combination of uh, video, video meeting, like an application like Zoom or Jitsi, web-based video meetings with a larger live streaming environment to expand to larger audiences. So you see the, on the left-hand side, so you see the uh, on-stage presentation, on the right-hand side, the virtual presentations and the combina combination mix and match and uh, virtual and online makes it a hybrid use case. So coming back to the uh, monetized content, as I said, uh, live auctions, live betting are interesting use cases where you directly have a monetized revenue channel. Um, you see an example of um, real-time estate sales, which is done by one of our customers in Australia. So they can directly bid on real estate uh, and be part of the sales activity without going um, to this uh, venue directly. Other examples, uh, horse racing or um, uh, casino gaming, which is of course very prominent here in Las Vegas. When you have casinos everywhere, you can expand this casino games also to the virtual space by creating interactive live games with the uh, gaming 
business application around the live stream. All these applications have in common that you have a live stream coming from the presentation uh, sent to uh, a live streaming platform and distributed, distributed at a global scale. And the players, the audience, open up the player, connect to the, to the closest edge server location in the content delivery network, and um, need to have a seamless user experience to have with ultra low latency live streaming so the uh, time difference between the presentation and the playback is very low. To enable these interactive use cases um, for the applications I just described. So what is needed for these interactive applications to create applications with interactive live streaming? Let's go into a bit more detail on the setup which you need to do on your side. Um, you have a camera on the live encoding system which you need to set up. Um, the, there are several challenges around that already. The optimal encoder setup for ultra low latency. You need to decide on the camera type. Is it a professional camera? Is it a webcam? Um, the encoder type can be software, hardware, or even a browser-based application. You need to decide on encoder configuration things like frame rate, bit rate, bits per second, constant bit rate, GOP sizes, etc. And um, decide on the ingest protocol, which can be RTMP, which is still very prominent for ingest, SRT, which we also enable on our cloud, WebRTC, WIP, uh, several ingest protocols are available to ingest for ultra low latency. Very important, of course, is the location and the network. So if you have a bad network on the first mile to go out to the system, you uh, lose quality of service for the whole audience. So being having a very stable network for the ingest side is very important to keep up a very, whole, very high um, user experience. But when you have set up all that, um, you can send the ingest stream to the live streaming service, and the live streaming service and CDN is then taking care about the delivery at a global scale. Having a look at the, the other side of the downstream, the last mile, the live players are picking up the live stream from the cloud system or C CDN, and everybody in the global audience needs to have a great user experience for this case. So it's uh, very important to keep this interactive uh, real-time streaming um, active on all cases for, all, for the whole audience for a very high user experience. So the technology behind that is not really deciding, um, but it's really the user experience and the customer experience uh, on the end, um, how good the stream is playing to keep the interactive elements active. Um, this creates a lot of challenges in the delivery side. Uh, one known challenge is the adaption to the bitrate and to the available network on the device you are using. So when you would send a HD stream, 4K stream, whatever, to the cloud, and you would like to play that back on a, a 3G network that doesn't work, so you need to adjust the quality levels to the right network de delivery side, and that's usually done by adaptive bitrate playback and based on live transcoding, which is a service part of the platform, so based on an incoming high-quality bitrate bit stream, the, uh, there will be created several uh, quality levels for delivering to several network types and the player needs to automatically decide on the best option then to keep the playback running all the time. And that's um, especially challenging for the ultra low latency interactive live streaming space. So you need to have a reliable network to really adjust to these quality levels and keep the latency very low in all cases. The streaming network, as I said, is very important to have uh, availability anywhere in the world. If you have uh, applications at a global scale, you need several um, server locations by the network, which needs to be very robust with 100% SLA. It should never fail for 24-7, 365 operations. Things like automatic failover and monitoring are very important. And also, uh, more and more important, are getting security concerns and compliance regulations like the European GDPR regulation, content protection things against misuse. So a lot of uh, challenging issues around the distribution in the network are important to keep your network content protected and deliver in high quality to the client devices. To get insight into the quality of the service, you need uh, the proper tools as well. So um, quality of service, quality of experience is enabled by data metrics and analytics, which is a really a powerful 
um, requirement for you and your customers to have complete end-to-end -end control about the quality of service and get insight into how good the quality is for different parts of the uh, playback um, environments. Also add some business intelligence around this and uh, get insights into po possible impacts on the, on the live streams like uh, buffering, frame drops, whatever, um, and make that visible for your own business workflows. So I can show you one example from our system. When you send a live stream from the uh, camera uh, to the upstream to the cloud, you might uh, run into several network issues and you can make that visible, visible with, with the right tools. We see, for example, in this case, the bit rate going up and down a lot um, from the encoder and at a certain time even dropping. So this might um, lead to some assumptions that the network has dropped in this case, which leads to bad user experience for the whole audience. So these tools help a lot to keep the quality at a high level and make that visible either on a dashboard um, or even on API level to add to your own monitoring and alerting systems. On the right hand side, it's a bit difficult to see now, but you see a very straight line going forward there that uh, the video bitrate is very constant and that uh, creates a good user experience with uh, uh, only a few buffering or no buffering and uh, it's the perfect um, result for live streaming for these use cases. So how, how do you get started for interactive live streaming? It's quite easy usually to get started. Uh, coming back to our platform, NanoStream Cloud, you can run a free trial, create your own tests with uh, our free demo account for our system. You can uh, run from your own webcam. You can use free software like OBS, which is a, a very stable tool, which is also very well suited for ultra low latency live streaming. Um, we have tutorials online, uh, video tutorials as well, where you can see how that works. You can then run that uh, on our dashboard, see the web player running, or even embed the live stream on your own web page to see how that runs in your own workflows. We support professional hardware encoders like Teradek or High, Vi High Vision or other br brands, or directly a webcast from the browser to make it really very simple to instantly send a live stream from within browser environments which you can then also use for your own branded business workflows. Embedding the live stream on your own web page is usually also very simple. Just copy paste some JavaScript code to your web page. You can run your own designs around that uh, based on web design and HTML workflows. Uh, this player, which is then embedded on the web page, and as I said, directly connects then automatically to the right server location and ensures that the a stream is running stable at all times and you need only to take care about the uh, web environment and your own business workflows and don't need to worry about the video technology and protocols below that. So no need to handle things like HLS distribution setups and things like that. That's covered, covered under the hood of the player APIs to be able to focus fully on the workflow and successful business application. Even easier it would be with an iframe embed code, which you can just copy paste from one code line and put that in a content management system or simple web page environments. So let's give a, a wrap up about that. Interactive live streaming is a great tool to engage your audiences at a global scale. It's very easy to get started, but the details matter, as I said. There are a lot of challenges around that to create a high quality of service in all times and it's important to have the right partners and uh, the right platform behind that. Um, our platform, which we offer as a complete live streaming platform, including control for the um, quality of service and quality of experience, and having the right tools available for metrics and analytics to have full insight and full control end-to-end -end for these types of applications. We also have our booth there, it's just some steps uh, to the right and um, we are happy to answer any questions for your use cases when you step by and uh, talk to us. Thank you very much.